Welcome to the Rule Dictator. My name is Corleth, your host, and this is how to play Renfield. Renfield is a card game that combines betting elements like poker and trick taking such as in Hearts and Euchre. As this is a gambling game, poker chips are very useful. Each player should start with $100 in chips. This game can be played with as few as 3 players and as many as 8, but the optimal number is between 4 and 6. Although I bought the game when it first came out, and consider it money well spent, it is now available for free. The link to download the cards and rules can be found in the description. Renfield is a fast-paced game that is both savage and fun, so let's get to it. A deck is comprised of 54 cards divided into 3 suits. The suits are Parts, Stones, and Tools. Each suit has cards ranked from 0 to 17. The suit and rank are featured in the top left corner of the card. A card can also have a cost and bugs. The cost, in dollars, is represented by a number of coins printed under the suit. A card can have a cost that ranges from 0 to 5. Bugs are printed down the left side of the card, below the cost. A card can have from 0 to 6 bugs. The 2s and 12s are a bit different. The 2s are money doublers and the 12s are bug doublers. The doublers will be explained in a bit. Take out the three zeros, called the key cards, and place them face up on the table. The remaining 51 cards are the deck. Select a player as the dealer. He will shuffle the deck and then deal six cards, face down, to each player. After looking at your hands, proceed to the bidding phase. Starting with the player to the left of the dealer, and going around the table once, in clockwise order, each player offers a bid for the lead or passes. The first bid may be as low as $1. Subsequent bids must be higher than the previous one. Highest bid takes the lead. If everyone passed, the dealer must take the lead with a bid of $5. The leader pays the pot the amount he bid and then rearranges the key cards, which are the three face-up zero ranked cards, to identify which suit is high trump, middle trump, and bottom. During trick taking for this round, a card from the high trump suit beats all cards from the middle and bottom suits, regardless of the rank of the card. Cards from the middle suit also trump any card from the bottom suit. As you can guess, the reason for taking the lead is to arrange the key cards to give your hand the best chance of winning. The leader chooses a card from his hand and plays it face up onto the table. The suit of this card must be followed, if possible, by the other players for this trick. If a player doesn't have a card in that suit, he may play any card from his hand. The player to the left goes next. Keep going around the table until everyone has played a card. The highest ranked card of the highest ranked suit takes the trick. The player who took the trick adds up the coin value of every card in that trick and pays that much to the pot. If there is a money doubler, multiply the cost by 2. If there are 2 of them, multiply the number of coins by 4. If that player is unfortunate enough to have taken all 3 money doublers in that trick, he must pay 8 times the coin value. Ouch. He is now the leader and plays a card from his hand. As before, the suit of his card must be followed for this trick. This continues until 6 tricks have been played, at which point the players will have no cards left in their hands. You may get to a point where you think you have no chance of winning the pot. In this circumstance you may wish to fold. Folding is done when it is your turn to play a card, but be aware that you may not fold until you have taken at least one bug this round. If you are the leader when you fold, the player to your left becomes the leader. Once you have folded, you do not play any more cards for the rest of the round and cannot win the pot. Speaking of winning the pot, at the end of the round, every player that hasn't folded adds up the bugs from the tricks they took. Bug doublers, which are the 12s, affect the entire set of cards and not just the trick in which the bug doubler was taken. Just like the money doublers, multiple bug doublers compound each other. Two bug doublers multiply your total bug count by 4, and all three multiply them by 8. The pot goes to the player who took the fewest bugs but has at least one. That's right, if you have taken no bugs during the round, you do not win. Be aware that it is possible to take tricks that contain no bugs. If there's a tie, split the money evenly. Any leftovers remain in the pot for the next round. The player to the left of the current dealer becomes the new dealer. He starts over at the dealing step. If you cannot pay the pot, you are immediately out of the game. Put your remaining chips into the pot and fold your hand. When everyone has had enough, stop playing and tally how much money each player made. The one who gained the most wins. If, after eliminations, you are down to two players, you should end the game. The game is kind of bland at two players. 
If you won the bid, arrange the card so that you have only one high card as top trump and all the rest at the bottom. The hope is that you will take a trick with your good card and leave the rest to the other players. Spiking the player who is going to take a trick with lots of bugs, or even a nasty bug doubler, is how you improve your odds of winning. Another possibility, although a bit riskier, is when you see that the trick has no bugs in it but you have no hope of taking it, play a card that also has no bugs. If every player does the same, the winner won't be able to take the pot on that trick alone. You will also notice that cards with no bugs tend to be expensive in coins. And that's it. Despite its simplicity, Renfield is not easy. Just like poker, reading the other players while also properly leveraging your own cards is the key to victory. This is not a game of luck. It takes skill, statistical analysis, and opponent awareness to win. For information about other CheapAss games, visit their website at CheapAss.com. Finally, comments and questions are always welcome, and if you liked the video, please click the like button. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.